Hey everybody, I'm Joe Deganzik, and this is Life in the Smarter Home. It's our last episode in our mini-series on the Elgato Eve lineup of products. These are HomeKit-enabled sensor products that we've been talking about, such as Eve Weather for temperature, humidity, and barometric pressure, Eve Door for the open-closed states of your doors and windows and practically anything that you can stick the little sensors on, and this time we've got the Eve Room a temperature, humidity, and air quality sensor. Now we're not going to go into all of the tech behind the particle sensor that's inside this guy, but Elgato has an article on the website and we'll link to that in the video description. Also, the physical size, the unboxing, the setup of this sensor is largely the same as the EVE weather sensor, so we're just going to skip right past that and get to the fun stuff which is tests and scenarios and how many particles we can throw at this guy. And speaking of that, establishing the baseline in terms of what is the lowest amount of particles you can expect in your home when the air is flat and calm, no ceiling fans running, no air conditioning, which is the opposite of what's going on right now. And I live in Phoenix, so it's the desert. Lots of stuff in the air all the time, whether, whether you're inside or out. So let's jump into the app. We'll go into the air quality uh, right now. You can see it's actually at excellent, but I'm going to jump into the bar, into the uh, the little graphs that they have. It was a lot higher when the air kicked on about mm, probably a half an hour ago. I've been running the fans and so forth to stir it up. So scenario one, the baseline roughly sits at about 450. Scenario two, the bar graph starts to go up. Ceiling fan goes on, starts to move the air around. Scenario three, of course, you bring on the central AC and potential particles in the air and in your ducting and so forth. All that stuff gets stirred around. And then it starts to come down a little bit because there's just only so much stuff that can be moved around in the air and it does tend to settle out a little bit. So that's, that's our three initial scenarios and tests, but of course we've got a lot more. So what's the next thing possibly that I could do that would stir up and put a lot more particulates into the air? What could that be? Cooking, of course. Cooking on nearly any level from just chopping vegetables, we all know what onions put out, to boiling and simmering and baking and braising and grilling and, well, just about everything in between can put out various vapors and volatile oils and particulates and whatnot into your home's atmosphere. People can be allergic to some of these cooking odors. Some people don't like um, being somewhere where fish is being cooked. And even for some pets, including small birds, it can even be fatal depending on what you're doing in the kitchen. So what are we doing in the kitchen? This is just some warm water and we're going to simply get it to a rolling boil. And as they do say in the cooking show industry, we'll be right back. Okay, so here we have our delicious, very hot, boiling, rolling boil. Can I add any more adjectives to this? We've got boiling hot water, okay? So let's go ahead and pull up the app right now and refresh and see where we are. And uh, the magical answer is 742. Now that's a little bit higher than when we tried it. Just to be fair, we tried it with the microwave with a little bit less amount of water. So it was a little bit uh, less. It was around 600 or so after a couple minutes of the particulates reaching the Eve room. So, all right, so that's boiling water, but that's rather boring. What else could we do? Maybe some sort of test with, um... and the mystery item is sweet potato fries, or I should should say are sweet potato fries. I mean, who doesn't love these little guys um, at any time of the day? But for breakfast, they're fantastic. They've been going for about 10 minutes. You see a little bit of the uh, grill marks on them. I'm not going to turn this into a whole cooking show, although I used to actually produce cooking TV shows. <laughs> Anyways, let's go to the app and take a look and see uh, how that has affected the air quality and the parts per million. We'll wait for it to update. It still says excellent, although we are kind of going upward, um, kind of going up into the uh, almost to the 700 range. So it's still giving off something. And um, so that kind of makes sense. Now, what is something else that of course goes with breakfast that would be, that would definitely give off uh, some volatile oils and some Bacon! Uh, loved by, well, almost everyone. And kind of on the opposite of the health spectrum from sweet potato fries. Let's see though on the app what the numbers actually say according to the Eve room. It was spiking up to about a thousand or so just a couple minutes ago. A 1418 fair. So this has been cooking for about 10 minutes or so. Um, kind of getting nice and crispy and I really can't wait to eat it. Um, but 
on the spectrum of rounding out our little cooking show, what hot beverage could go with my wonderful um, sweet potato fries and bacon? Coffee. Let's let's get some started. Wouldn't you rather go to Starbucks? Well, yes, actually, but uh, can you just be quiet for the rest of the show? Of course, um, it is dripping pretty slowly, so let's let's speed that process up a little bit. Okay, so the coffee is done. It's been finished brewing for a few minutes now. Let's jump over to the app and uh, we'll just pull down to uh, refresh the latest information. And uh, I checked it a couple times during the brewing process. Um, now it's gone down, but we can jump in here and we'll just kind of just quickly look. You can see it kind of has gone up and down. It was up in the 800s during the brewing process started coming down. So question is, if it's not breakfast time, if it's maybe a little bit later in the day, and say you might be trying to create a romantic mood. Well, of course, nothing goes better with romance other than perhaps flowers and chocolate. Quite like candlelight. And an overabundance of said candlelight combined with a dash of home automation magic can create quite a beautiful ambiance glow. Now, these candles, 10 to 15 of them perhaps, have been burning for about 10 to 15 minutes or a little bit longer, heating up the room and of course adding to particulates and smoke and little bits of wax and things. Anything on fire is going to do that. So let's go ahead and pull down a refresh. It's been updated recently. We've run this a couple of times and we'll see that we are currently, the Eve room thinks it is about 775, so good. Good is what I would say. And Obviously, public service announcement, be careful with fire, be careful with the quantity of candles and where you place them and don't take our uh, ideas <laughs> for what you might do. So, one last test to run and I'll let you guess what that might be. You gotta look at the camera for your YouTube debut, you ready? Oh, oh, uh, sorry, just kinda goofing off here. Uh, where are we? Oh yes, pets, pets, even, yes, Pet ducks. Uh, he normally actually lives outside. But as we all know, of course, um, dogs, cats, well, feathered animals, and just about everything in between that can live indoors uh, or, you know, outdoors most of the time and indoors some of the time, whatever. People can, of course, be allergic. Um, pets, whether they're winged. <laughs> you did that, like, not even on cue. Like, that was amazing. Um, he doesn't have a name, by the way, so don't don't be like making it. Well, we'll have a contest, but anyhow, um, dogs, cats, feathers, fur, all kinds of animals and things can bring things into your environment, whether they live completely indoors or not. That can be um, a problem for people, health and um, people who are allergic and hypoallergenic and, and all those kind of things. So the question is, um, what does that do to the air quality? Are you blocking the product shot? Um, so literally, and he's been in here for a while kind of cooling off, he was panting earlier, because it's literally 112 outside, according to the Eve weather uh, out in the backyard. But let's take a look right now, because we've got the Eve positioned pretty close to him. Let's take a look at the living room, and uh, let's see, and have it go ahead and update. Update just now. Wow, excellent air quality at just 450 parts per million. So that's pretty good. So he's actually... Um, been inside for a while, so maybe anything that he brought in has kind of like settled down. This takes a snapshot, you know, as a real time, as we know, so not too bad. You haven't made, uh, you haven't made the air quality, um, any worse in here. Oh, and you can like quack on command. He's a male. This is a Rowan. This is not National Geographic, but it's, it's, it's a Rowan. He's a Rowan. He's not a Mallard. It's illegal to actually own Mallards. Um, and, uh, ducks make amazing, amazing pets. So, let's, uh, Let's wrap this up, shall we? I hope you enjoyed all the tests of the Eve Room Sensor. It does seem to be a great little product and I've had a lot of fun learning about the air quality around my place. This and the entire line of Eve products is best with iOS 9 and later, and they are software upgradable, so they're expected to get better over time, just as Apple continues to improve iOS and HomeKit. And of course, speaking of HomeKit and other home automation tasks that you can do, you can. Hey Siri, what's the temperature in the living room?
and my butler is asking around. The living room current temperature is at 79.9 degrees. And perhaps slightly warmer just because I have it in my hand. A big thanks to Elgato for sending us their products so we could make these reviews. If you want to get one of these yourself, on Amazon.com you can find them at $75. And if you use the link in the video description, you will help support the show. Speaking of that, if you like our episodes and you haven't yet subscribed, not sure why, head over to youtube.com slash smarterhomelife and click subscribe. If you love this kind of content, please consider becoming a direct supporter. Head over to patreon.com slash smarterhomelife. I couldn't do these shows without your support. I'm Joe Deganzik. Thanks for watching. See you next time.